History Inspiration Day. This event is to celebrate black history. If you're wondering who we are, we are Charlton Athletic Primary Stars. In the last few weeks, we have been raising people's awareness to be confident with their culture and do not let people discriminate you. We have been researching about what Premier League and football have been doing. They are trying to make black lives feel comfortable in their culture and to stop racism. And it's good to see footballers using their voice. My six other friends and I have also been looking at how we could make a difference to the society and how we could stop racism and make a change. Hello everyone, and um, I've got Tenzin and Cameron who are going to lead this event. I'll leave it over to you guys. Hi, I'm Tenzin. Hi, I'm Cameron. Welcome to our Black History Inspiration Day. This month has been a very special celebration. Black History has been celebrated for more than 30 years in the UK. It is to celebrate events in the history of African dia diaspora, to show, remember, to show and remember the civil rights movement, to end discrimination and to promote equality and freedom. Tenzin will now read a message she has wrote for the event. The difference between you and I. We breathe the same air, we eat the same food, we drink the same water, we use the same tools. We are not different at all. We bleed the same blood, we have the same money, but the only difference is our skin colour. We, we live the same lives to do the same things. We all are all the same in the end, no matter what skin colour you have. Daronita, please tell us a bit about yourself. Hello, hi everybody, I'm Daryl. Um, so I am a 100 metre sprinter and I run for Great Britain. I started track and field when I was about 10 years old. So in primary school, and I've been doing it ever since. So I competed for my borough, which is Lewisham, and then London, and then England, and now Great Britain. So I've been doing athletics literally half of my life. I'm 24 now. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Linda Bird, can you please tell us a bit about yourself, please? Oh, yes, I certainly can. Hello, and thank you for inviting me to join in. My name is Councillor Linda Bird and I am the Mayor of the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Deji, please tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, hi guys, how you doing? Um, yeah, my name is Deji Shilaja and um, I'm obviously a footballer for Charlton Athletic. Um, yeah, um, so I joined Charlton about last year and I've been playing professional football for about 10 years now, I believe it is. I started off really late. Um, I came into the system at 17 which is um, really, really late. Like, like I never came through no academy or anything like that. I just played through Sunday League and um, obviously went to school and went to college. So I got really lucky and um, when I was playing for my college team and I'd done really well and then um, I got picked up by Cardiff and obviously went there and I obviously started my career there. And um, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm a young man. I'm, I'm a father as well. And obviously like, yeah, that's much about me to be fair. Daryl Nita, can you please tell us who were your role models and heroes when you were growing up? Um, that's a really good question. So I would say that my biggest role models ever were definitely my parents, especially my mum. Just because track and field is one of those sports where you need your parents behind you pretty much with every sport you do and everything you do in life, really. And just from a young age, having my mum finish her job in the day and pick me up from school, take me to the track, pick me up, make my dinner and when you look back and just all the amazing things she did and the sacrifices she made for me to have the life I have now and the career that I have, that's very inspirational. But I'd also say one of my other biggest inspirations, and I know it's a bit cliche because everybody says this, but Usain Bolt for me because when I was watching the 2012 Olympics, actually the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, I was in year eight, so I was in secondary school. And that was a time of my life where I didn't know if I wanted to take my sport professionally. And then watching him win the Olympics in 2008 and then again in 2012 in London just inspired me because I'm a Londoner I'm from the borough of Greenwich. And if he can do it, why the hell can't I? So it was just inspiring to see somebody do it 20 minutes from my home. And I just said to myself, I need to compete in that stadium one day. I'm going to do it. So, yeah, that's one of my biggest inspirations. <laughs> Linda Bird, what are the positive contributions of black people in the borough? Wow, that's a huge question. 
Absolutely great question, but how long have you got? Um, <laughs> right, well, I think you've got to just say, what's the contribution of people? Um, people from all different cultures and all different communities bring their own richness to who we are. And so by sharing um, music and sport and poetry and food from all these different cultures as well as religions, we then become a much richer place. So for me, uh, I have to say, if I'm looking just at the black community, for me, it is about performing arts because that's my background. Um, but that's a personal thing. Um, I think a lot of my friends, I, I mean, I don't really notice who is black and who isn't, but that's just me as well. I just feel that Greenwich is seamless. I like to think, in, in the way we behave towards each other, no matter what our colour and no matter what our creed. But without our black and ethnic community, we would be such a poor place and such a dull place. We wouldn't have that wonderful rainbow aspect to all that we, we are and do. So, in fact, I think that um, black people bring bring the sunshine, they bring another aspect because that's what all people do. Um, and I think that is one of the best questions I've ever had to answer and one of the trickiest. Thank you. <laughs> Reggie, who was your role models and heroes when you were growing up? Who are my role models? And um, Okay, um, when I was growing up, I never really had any role models. I mean, I never really had people that I looked up to in terms of like, that wants to be like people that inspired me and people that I had admiration for. I think similar to, I think similar to Daryl was my, obviously my parents and my mum, because obviously um, at the time she was a single mother. My daddy lived in America and um, my mum obviously, there was four of us at the time. So me, my two brothers and my sister. And she used to work obviously really hard. And then we used to obviously go to school and she used to make sure that she would pick us up make sure we were always fed, make sure we were always bathed and clean, we always had clean clothes. And like, we never lacked, like, that's one thing that we never had in our household. Like, we never lacked, we weren't rich or anything like that at all. But like, as in, like, she made us all have everything we needed. And to this day, like, as in, especially now, because I've grown up and I'm a dad myself now, I look back and I appreciate her even more. And there's times when I found myself just, like, just at home, just thinking about her, just thinking, wow, like, for her to be able to do that at the same time. I never complain as well. Like, as in, your parents never complain. They do. They might complain like behind your back. They don't do it to your face. Daryl Nita, what part do you think black people have played in athletics? Do you think there's a difference from when you were growing up and now? That's a good question. Um, I feel like track and field in itself is amazing because it's all about the different countries coming together, competing on the world stage. Um, when it comes to the sprints especially we are very prominent um, and just from a personal point of view in 2016 when I was part of the team that won a medal in um, the 4x100 relay we got a bronze medal and we were four dark skinned women from London and the images that were taken from that achievement were four girls at the Olympic Games on the podium um, all dark skinned women and it was a very strong image because it's just not something you see all the time, that kind of level of success, especially being a woman as well. And it was a very strong, impactful image. And we did get so many young people reaching out to us saying, oh my God, just to see four black women from London achieving something so great is really inspirational. So I feel like, um, yeah, it's, it impacts sport a lot and, and track and field and yeah, black people. You know, it's not just athletics, it's everything. Um, and we definitely make an impact. Thank you. Linda, as a mayor, what can you do to promote other cultures? All right. Um, well, what I plan to do and what I'm hoping we all do uh, as council members is we have what we, what we call inclusion. That um, 
it doesn't matter what your color or your creed that you should have equality and you should have access to everything the same as everybody else so my job really is to make sure that um these are big words for me to use but i'll explain is to make sure that we actually have something like positive discrimination so say um say you feel as though some people are not getting as much of the slice of the of the action as they should um then you make sure that you give them more of the action so that you positively make sure there's more for black people to take part in and that's that's my plan and that's my role thank you has any anyone ever racially abused you yeah when i was young um there was a time when obviously kids didn't necessarily want to play because of my color of my skin but um i believe that was down to the kids not understanding that there's different there's different races out there you know and i believe that comes down to parents to educate their children that we're all one race but just different shades of it you know and i believe um obviously racism is not a nice thing and obviously nobody should have to experience it and i believe with time i pray that we do get better at it but i do want um, everyone to understand that these things are real and these things will happen to today but it's and that's what i believe is down to our parents and down to our teachers and down to our peers to educate us that um these things are still happening but at the same time we're all one race we're all human race and we should all be treated equally good one Anita, how can you show more of your culture? Ooh, um, that's a good one. And I feel like it's a good question. So being obviously black and living in Britain and competing for Great Britain, um, at first it was, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, but I think what I'm trying to say is it's important just to be effortlessly black or effortlessly yourself, effortlessly African, effortlessly Caribbean, whatever it is you are, it's about being proud of that and never hiding your culture, never talking down on anybody else. Um, just being proud of who you are, your heritage, where you're, where you're from and um, educating people, having these conversations. I feel like the Black Lives Matter movement, which happened this summer, was very inspirational and very educational for a lot of us. And um, these conversations are necessary. As the mayor has said, um, it's about making these changes in our environments and having these conversations and being effortlessly yourself. I feel like for me, um, this Black Lives Matter movement even gave me some extra confidence just to fly the British flag with pride. and. Because you asked a question before about racism, and I've experienced quite a lot of racism. Um, the success that I had at the Olympics in 2016, I don't really want to say the things, obviously I wouldn't say, but it was some racial slogans, racial slurs, people, just really bitter, ignorant people. Um, Ten, you sh you're not from here, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be flying that flag, things like that. I was born and raised here, I'm British, um, and it's about being effortlessly proud of that and... Not explaining yourself to anybody, just being you. I feel like we can all take a lesson from that. And um, yeah, just be yourself and confident. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. You're what welcome. do you, I mean, Linda Bird, what do you think it's important to have diversity in the world? For me, we live in a, a very um, interesting, vibrant, uh, world um, and and Greenwich is one of the most interesting and most col colorful and vibrant places in the world but the world is interesting and vibrant and it's full of many people of many shades and we are going to always reflect that and everyone has a right in that in that world Deji, what can people please do to help campaign against racism um, okay, yeah, we have loads of different organisations in football at the moment, especially if you look at the Premier League right now, um, they got this um, no racism in football kind of thing, and um, last season I believe it was no racism in football, but now they've changed it to no racism anywhere, so which is obviously good, as in they've stamped out 
the whole in football thing because people may have thought that yeah it's okay to be racist outside of football but it's actually not you know that like racism is not tolerated anywhere so obviously for them to change their slogan to no racism anywhere now basically showing people that listen racist and racism is wrong you know because obviously people may have acted on that and tried to be racist to you outside of football do you know what i mean but um yeah but as a club you know um obviously we do loads of little projects to loads of little, obviously when we're allowed to go to schools and stuff like that we used to go to places and obviously had to educate everyone and try to educate people to let them know that yeah there's different there's different races different religions different cultures different everything you know and i think going back to the question you asked me about it's important as well you know because obviously white people for example i have white friends and they cultures you know and i have chinese friends they have different cultures so it's important to have different races where i can go in and learn their side as well i can go in and learn the chinese side and i can obviously teach them my side as well you know whereas if we're all one race and one color we'll be pretty mundane and pretty boring do you know what i mean we all know what we mean we'd all be the same we'd be the same but obviously now we have different colors we can all teach each other everyone's called to teach each other different things and see how we all react to things you know which i think is really exciting and really interesting obviously um I'm sure everyone in school thinks the same thing as well, you know, and I think it just down to everyone to educate everyone that, yeah, there's different races and people of different backgrounds and you shouldn't be discriminated against because you're not looking the same as a certain type of person. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you to our guests for your answers and your time. Thank you all for listening and being part of the celebration. The message from Primary Stars Group is be fair, be, be ambitious, ambitious, be inspiring, be, be connected. connected.